the first time that I ever performed Mahler was in the BBC proms that you sang the alto part four when I was about 18 and that's what made me fall in love with Mahler and uh, get into my PhD topic from Mahler. Really? Yeah, so I know you as the Ulicht voice, that's how I associate you with it. So for you, coming from singing early music and Handel opera, changing into singing Mahler, mm. how have you dealt with how do you deal with the contrast of the two genres? And It's always amused me. I, I'm just a little anecdote. I sang with the Mahler Chamber Orchestra, with um, Daniel Harding. Mm. And um, I said, it's, it's wonderful to sing Mahler with you. Not that they play Mahler a lot, actually. And um, I said, oh, I've just come from some, a Handel performance, I forget which. Because they just heard me sing Kinder Totenlied, or the first lines of Nun will die Sonne so hell aufgehen. And they said, how can you sing Handel with that sound? And I said, well, it's all in the mind. You make yourself change the style. You, you, you immerse yourself in the style. And that takes over. It controls the voice. I mean, if you, it's just like a chef, I suppose. You don't cook uh, one dish like the other. You know, when you're asked to make uh, a meal in one style, you then don't apply the same rules to the other so I think you have to be dexterous you have to be imaginative and actually interested in the in the in the composer him or herself yeah, yeah. do you think it it adds to it having it performed on period instruments and interesting do you think it's obviously you work a lot with yes. period music anyway so do you think that it brings I remember when Simon Rattle worked with the OAE on on Tristan Act 2 mm. and he encouraged them to vibrate more because you know they're so used to not using vibrato um, so, of course, they will use vibrato, um, but they don't put so much, the OAE won't be putting so much elbow into the sound. And so, I mean, imagine their focus will be more on rhythm and pitch yeah. and clarity, which is great. I really think the piece will benefit yeah. from, especially, the, you know, the preceding Lendler and all this lovely da 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 It'll be beautiful and, and light. Um, and the, the you know the brass and everything will be incredibly powerful and a accurate. And, um, I feel that that I'm not going to choose to do lack of vibrato, but I am aware that I'm fitting into a t uh, an orchestra that plays a certain way, yeah. and I know that orchestra very well. I've so I've, I've done, this has been my absolute joy that I've um, and good luck that I've worked with them for so long, and they're great at accompanying. So it's, it's, they know me. So that's a real one, really wonderful gift for me to, to sing with a group in a very intimate song. Yeah. It's very intimate, it's not showy. It's, it's just a simple statement. And, and like actually so many Handel arias are, mm -hmm. not the showy ones obviously, but Auri de Per Pietà from Cesare. Again, it's, it's just a personal statement of, of of, of, of man in in the elements and f failure, and I think there's a Handel had that tremendous connection to humanity as did Mahler. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what about then in the fifth movement? Do you plan to change the way that? No. You just... um, well, again, I've heard practically every recording there is available either on YouTube or on, and yes. The, the people that I tend to gravitate towards vocally are people like Jesse Norman, yeah. um, who have this incredible power. Um, but I don't see why it has to be quite so contralto y. Mm. Um, oh, Glaube. That's probably too low. <clears throat> but this is, oh, Glaube. You know, it, it, just, it just needs to have a, an honest, simple statement yeah. with, with no. Um, I don't know, frills and fuss. Yeah. I think that's what Mahler would have liked, is just, just to say the, the words very clearly, very rhythmically and very simply, without too much romanticising. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's personal too, because that text is his own text. Rather than yes, exactly. That. So it obviously becomes, you get the statement of Mahler's yes, own words yes. versus the... But of course I can't know that. None of us can know that. <laughs> I did say in this Guardian article recently that um, I'd, I'd love to have asked him about Mahler too, about yeah. or Urlicht, and about you know what role the singer should take in in act in the final act, final movement. Um, we we can't know, 
because for all we know, he changed his mind about when he heard a voice, he thought, oh, well, I'll go with what that voice is offering. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. But I, I imagine he was a, a quicksilver man, a mercurial man. I think he would have gone with what he had, mm. unless he didn't like it. <laughs> 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 and which I can imagine would be very difficult with that singer um, or player or whoever. It's interesting because he makes... Marla seems when he was alive, he seemed to be so specific, yes. score specific, which to me lends itself to historically informed performances of his works because he would have liked the fact yes. that we're trying to yes. to make his well often he said all of it or you know without vibration without vibration yeah. so and that was obviously he was looking for a sound and he was looking for you never see that well I've never I don't I'm not a great Wagner I know all I, I really am not but I I don't I wouldn't imagine one would find that in a Wagner yeah. score even though he comes from the world of Schumann mm. um, where you know, again that, that the link is 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 back to Lida there. That's how I view all all of Wagner's works anyway. The set pieces are long lead, yeah. um, long leads. So I think I think we'll just go with the sound that the orchestra makes and sort of, and I think we'll all be singing from the same uh, sheet, as it yeah. were. Yeah. And what was it that you that led you to working with Mahler? Did you get did it, was it your own choice that you decided to start singing Mahler, or was you kind of offered? To you and... Well, I've always been a bit of a harmony freak. I, I, I've played jazz a lot as a young person, and and I really am fascinated with with the way um, one can create an emotional being, a state, through harmony. I don't know. I've just always found the more complex the harmony, the more drawn I am, and I think I must have found Mahler's music ticked many, many boxes. Um, and yet the simplicity of Handel again, but then he can suddenly throw in a, a strange harmony and you think, gosh, where did that come from? You know what, why he was doing it. And the same with Bach again. I loved playing his preludes and fugues mm. um, because he would often suddenly throw in a, a, a weird harmony and you think, where did that come from? And it was mm. never straightforward. Um, so I, I don't know if there's a particular singer that has drawn me in to Mahler, but, and my parents didn't play Mahler. Um, as a child. So I, I probably came to it via the Ruckert leader because for some reason they're very s precious to me, especially yeah. Ich bin der Welt abhanden gekommen. Oh my goodness. Um, maybe just because it had a, a Beethoven feel to it. Yeah. Um, there was something something of of the stillness and the, and the beauty of a slow movement of a Beethoven symphony or piano sonata. Um, I just thought it, 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 it 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 took me to another place, as it does most people, and I vowed to sing it well. That was probably one of the things when I was a student saying, well, whatever happens to my career, I want to sing these songs and Ravel's Scheherazade. Yeah. So even if I don't sing them with a big orchestra or anywhere important, I've got to train my voice well enough to sing that, that music. See, but Ravel's Scheherazade again, a piece which had the most incredible harmonies, again, very different, but is harmony based. So then, if with the second, just as an overall, if you were trying to describe it to someone maybe who who had never seen it before or was coming to this concert as mm. a beginner to Mahler, an introduction yeah. to Mahler, how what would you how, what were your selling points? What is it? Life changing. Life changing. Okay. Um, why? Because you will see depths and colours and beauty and horror mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in, in one evening and yet you'll be supported with this wonderful, um, wonderful uplifting ending that you, you might begin in the abyss with taut and fire um, and then you will be gradually lifted through a sort of journey to the wonderful transfiguration at the end, yeah. the resurrection. And you will come out thinking that you have grown as a person. <laughs> I think that's very fair. <laughs>